Getting clients in your business is going to be about a thousand times easier when your website looks like this and not this, or instead of just having this. Now, the thing which holds so many aspiring small business owners back from having a website, however, is that it just feels so overwhelming. And oh my God, I think I'm allergic to code. Which, in case you missed it, it's 2024 and no one codes to build a website anymore. So feel free to take that fear and put it aside because it's both not serving you and also not true. Legitimately, if you are tech savvy enough to use a computer or a phone and figure out how to click on this YouTube video, then that's about the level of tech ability that you need to build a website these days. Yes, really, I know, it's great, right? Now, I know this can feel intimidating and like there's so many decisions to make, but don't you worry, Auntie Paige is here and together, friend, we are going to get you through this and very soon, your business will be on the interwebs so you can one, look legitimate, and two, be found by the people of the internet, including getting found in the search results of Google. Because as they say, the best place to hide a dead body is on page two of Google. So today, we're gonna talk about first, which website building platform you should choose based on your tech ability and what you want your website to do. Second, what the heck a domain is. Third, the cost of all of these things. Fourth, what you should put on said website. Fifth, SEO, which is techie web designer speak for search engine optimization. Basically, it's a fancy flowery term, meaning you get your well-deserved place in the search results and people can actually find you in Google. And sixth, how to get people to your fabulous new website. So you have some learning to do. I hope you have your beverage of choice at hand, coffee, tea, shot of tequila, bottle of wine, whatever works for you, no judgment. As I said, no one codes to build websites anymore. Website building platforms were made so even the most technically allergic of us can build a website by dragging and dropping things on a page. Yes, you too, 72 year old Joan, I see you there. Now, the problem is however, there is just so many website building platforms, it's hard to pick one and to make it even more confusing, there's no one best platform because different ones are best for different website needs. So. I'll run through the most popular ones and tell you when to pick which. If you wanna sell hundreds or thousands of physical products and ship them all over the world to all corners of the earth, and you want some fancy automations to happen, like people are able to leave you reviews, then Shopify is what you should use. It is undisputed the absolute best for e-commerce. It's also Canadian, so I like it for that reason. Now, every comparison chart and video will tell you that Shopify is the best for e-commerce. It's not the easiest platform in the world or the most beginner friendly, but with a few tutorials, you can definitely put together a functioning online shop with Shopify. Now, let's say you're not selling tea towels and delivering them to all over the world, but instead you intend for your website to be used for other purposes, like advertising your services or your restaurant or your yoga studio, or it's a personal website and you just wanna be able to write a blog and share your thoughts and maybe, maybe sell some digital products like courses or templates or eBooks. Then in that case, what should you use? The two most popular and best website builders in this case are first, Squarespace, and second, WordPress. Now I think the most simple way of explaining the difference between the two is something that we're all familiar with. Squarespace is like Apple. It's simple to use, it's all in one, it's intuitive, it's beautiful, and it's very stylish. WordPress is like Microsoft or Android phones. There's more option, but also more complication. There's not such a focus on style and looks and simplicity, but more you have the ability to change everything. But what you get in flexibility, you lose in ease of use. Now, seeing that this is a video for beginners, I honestly think you should probably choose the apple of options, i.e. Squarespace. That's honestly what I find is best for 99% of small business owners and people who are newer to making and managing websites. So Squarespace can also help you with so much more than just building a website, thankfully. Squarespace has so many built-in things, which is super handy, like email marketing and appointment bookings and the ability to host courses. And if you do want to sell physical products through the website too, it does have e-commerce built in as well. It's just not quite as powerful as Shopify, but if you're just selling a few dozen or even a hundred products, it is totally sufficient. Now, Squarespace has a bunch of different templates that you can use for free to get started with your design. And Squarespace sites just look good. So even if you are not the most creative person in the world, you'd actually almost have to work pretty hard to make the website look bad. 
I should probably also mention at this point that this video is not sponsored. Shopify and Squarespace do not pay me to say these great things about them, but I do have affiliate links so you can check out those and support the channel and my margarita fund by clicking those in the description below. Which by the way, actually, if you go with Squarespace, I have a fancy code that you can use. It's page 10 and you'll get 10% off at checkout with that code too. So coming back to platform, if you want to build an e-commerce store with shipping physical products all around the world, choose Shopify. If you want to do anything else, choose Squarespace. Now, the other thing I need to warn you of to stop you from self-sabotaging is this. The platform that you choose actually isn't the be all and end all. The biggest problem will be not getting started. All of the platforms, all of them, even ones we haven't spoken about today, they're gonna get you a website that's online and that's working. And all of the platforms give you the ability to be found in the search results. You can do most everything on most platforms. Yes, some are easier to use than others. Yes, some have extra bells and whistles and features built in or not. But again, procrastinating because you're afraid to pick one is actually probably the worst thing you could do for your business. <laughs> and truly, everything is able to be overcome. Even if some feature you want isn't possible in the platform that you pick down the road, you can actually switch website platforms down the line or probably more likely you'll just add on some feature with some other software and that's a totally fine solution too. Now, we'll talk about pricing on these platforms in just a moment, but we need to first talk about something that you may have heard people speaking about before and that is domains. A domain is your website address, the thing someone types into the search bar to get to your website. Mine is my name, pagebrenton.com. Apple's domain is apple.com. Starbucks's domain is starbucks.com. Domains are often, but not always, .coms. You could also get .co's or .orgs or .ca's is common for Canadians or .co.uk's are common for the British. But don't believe the lie that a .com is superior in terms of your website showing up in Google. Having a .org or .co makes literally no difference to whether or not you're gonna come up in the search results. So if the .com for your preferred website name isn't available, you can use another ending and that is also totally fine. Speaking of where you can check if your preferred domain name is available, if you go to squarespace.com forward slash domain and then search for the one that you want, but don't buy it yet. Hold up. <laughs> There's a way that you can get that domain for free, so keep watching this video and we'll get to that point soon. Now, if you're still with me, not too overwhelmed, no panic attacks happening anywhere, no, no one's having a heart attack, great, moving on. Let's talk about price. Different website building platforms have different prices. There's also multiple options and everything, but for easy comparison and probably what you're gonna want as a beginner is probably the smallest, most basic plan on these platforms. So for Shopify, that is $29 a month when paid annually. And for Squarespace, that is $16 a month when paid annually. Now, if you're wondering and you've heard about hosting and the fact that you need to pay for that too, just know that that is hosting is like a WordPress problem. With Shopify and Squarespace, you don't need to pay for hosting separately. It's included in your $29 a month or $16 a month plan, which is another example of why WordPress isn't the most beginner friendly. There's a lot of complication like hosting, which is a problem that you just don't have with the platforms that we're discussing today. Now, if you're not sure if you want to commit to the platforms yet, do know that both of them actually have a free trial. Shopify's is three days long, Squarespace's is two weeks long, though to be honest, if you ask Squarespace nicely to extend your free trial, I've literally never heard of them say no. So it can be a lot longer than two weeks if you need it to be longer than two weeks. In terms of domain, .com domains with Shopify are often about $15 a year and with Squarespace, they used to be $20 a year, but now I'm noticing when I'm looking at it, they're mostly $12 a year. So I guess they recently dropped their pricing there. Basically domains are super cheap and there's not a massive price variance based off where you buy them. You can thankfully pretty easily buy a domain with Shopify and Squarespace. So you don't need to have the complication of buying your website in one place and your domain name at another, connecting them all and everything. You can just get it all in one spot. And fun fact with Squarespace, if you pay for your website annually instead of monthly, you actually get your domain name free for the first year. Okay, so now you've chosen the website building platform, which is right for you. You've figured out what a domain name is and that the ending of it really doesn't matter for ranking in Google. And you're even fancy enough to know now that you don't need to pay for hosting because that is so 2013. Now, let's move on to what to put on your website. Assuming you're building a website for a business, you'll likely want the following pages. A homepage, a blog slash content page. I'll explain more why in a moment when we get to SEO that this page is important. Third, you want some page where people can learn about working with you or see your service offering or buy your course or whatever it is that you're basically selling through your business. Basically think a page which makes your business money. And then finally, you want an about page, which is always a nice touch too. And please, please, please put a photo on your face at least once on this website, 
likely on your about page and maybe also on your homepage too, I cannot tell you how much trust is built from people seeing your beautiful smiling face on your website. Now, if you wanna know what to put exactly on something like your homepage to make it look all professional, I actually have a website homepage content planner, which will guide you through what to think about, what to write on the page, etc. I used to just share this with my paid course students, but I'll be nice and give you access to it too. I'll link it for you in the description below and also pop it up above here somewhere too. Moving on to SEO, which again is techie website designer speak for search engine optimization, or more simply, the stuff that you need to do on your website to ensure that it gets found in Google. Now people, massively, massively overcomplicate SEO. They throw out all these wild ideas like you need meta tags and you've gotta have developer mode on in order to make your website load faster. And they say these things so you feel overwhelmed and then you just pay them to take the problem off of your plate when really it's not actually that difficult. <laughs> Here is what matters for SEO. Writing good content. That's it, that's pretty much SEO simplified. And you might think, but Paige, no, 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 I have done my research and keywords are king. To which I say this, a few years ago, I went to an SEO conference in Berlin. They wanted an example of a website to roast, so I volunteered mine. And they asked me, Paige, what do you want to be found for in Google? To which I said, I wanna be found for the term Squarespace website designer. So they Googled the term and lo and behold, there was my website at the very top of the search results. I beat out every single other Squarespace website designer for that top spot. Most people know SEO. Now the SEO speaker then said, okay, well, it looks like you're doing something right. <laughs> Instead of roasting you, maybe we can just look at what you're doing right on your website as you're ranking so high. So I went onto my homepage and read through it and not once was the keyword Squarespace website designer on my homepage, which confused said SEO guy because keywords do indeed help. And so he asked me, what are you doing? <laughs> and I just said, well, I've blogged about Squarespace more than any other blogger on the internet. And honestly, I was just too lazy to put my keywords in the right spots because I just find it so boring. So instead, I just enjoyed writing and I had hundreds of blog posts on the topic. So moral of the story is if you write good content, you can basically ignore all the advice about keywords and meta tags and load speed and all that other nonsense and you're probably gonna be just fine or even ranking in place number one. Which brings me back to that blog page that we spoke about before. If you want more than a snowball's chance in hell of ranking in Google, you're going to need to write content. And that content typically goes on your blog page on your website. Now, if you podcast or create videos like I do, don't ignore the SEO aspect. It is still best practice to write thorough, in-depth show notes for your podcast, not just lazy, I always see this, it's like five bullet points of like the main things that were spoken about, and I see a lot of podcasters do that. Or if you do YouTube like me, my team actually writes an accompanying blog post which basically says what was said in the video, so someone could consume the content even if they didn't watch a single second of this video. Now, that's pretty much the bar you need to pass. If I didn't listen to your podcast episode or watch your YouTube video, could I still get the point and the takeaways of the content? If you're doing that, you're golden. Now, if you're wondering, okay, I put all this work in, this website is looking so darn good, I'm actually pretty proud of myself. Maybe I should be a website designer. Well, maybe you should. It's not actually that crazy of an idea. That's literally how I started being a website designer. You can subscribe to my channel. I have plenty more videos to help you do exactly that. Okay, your potential new career aside, next you're probably wondering, how do I get people to go to this website? There's basically two options. First, share it on social media, which if you have a following of a zillion people already, then fabulous. If that's not the case, however, and you kind of want the website to get seen beyond the 200 Instagram followers that you have, that's when SEO becomes important again. So often people think, okay, so I like write these blog posts and then I need to share them somewhere in order for people to see them. And that's literally not the point. The point is you write good content and then Google puts that good content in their search results and then people find your website and content through the search results. So if you're writing good content, you don't really need to worry about like sharing your blogs elsewhere. Just writing good content is actually enough. Now, of course, what is good content and how do you create it? Watch this video next on SEO, or if you want a tutorial on how to build your website on Squarespace, watch this video next.